1968, construction of the nuclear power plant Three Mile Island began on a small island in the Susquehanna River near Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Construction was finished 10 years later when the second of two nuclear reactors began to produce electricity. Over 40 years ago, on March 28, 1979, there was a partial meltdown due to mechanical and human errors that released radioactive gases into the atmosphere and was deemed the worst nuclear disaster in U.S. history. Let me take you back to the early hours of the incident and what occurred. To better understand, let's take a look at this diagram. A mechanical or electric issue at Three Mile Island Unit 2 Reactor set off a series of chain events that led to the release of radioactive gases into the atmosphere. There was a malfunction in the water pumps in the reactor core. These are used to help cool the radioactive fuel. Human error occurred when the power plant staff did not realize that the Unit 2 reactor was experiencing a huge loss of coolant, which led to there being little to no water flow, thus causing the reactor to overheat. The nuclear fuel began to melt the metal container, and the reactor started to melt. The radioactive gases escaped into the atmosphere through the top of the plant. It reminded people of a volcano beginning to erupt with smoke and nuclear gases coming out of the top. The cleanup process for Three Mile Island cost over $970 million and lasted over 12 years. The Three Mile Island reactor that melted and was part of the accident was closed and was encased in concrete. All the radioactive material was removed from the Pennsylvania site and shipped to a nuclear waste facility in Idaho. In a small town, Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, approximately 22 miles from the nuclear power plants, where Robert Brown Jr., age 40, Sandra Brown, age 39, Robert Brown III, age 7, and Ryan Brown, age 4. Robert Brown Jr. was at the naval base where he worked when he was alerted. Sandra and Ryan were in a car driving to pick up Robert III from elementary school, and this is their story their perspective as they remember it. How were you notified that Three Mile Island was having a nuclear meltdown? That uh, we heard through radio because that was the first sign that the radio picked it up, news organization found out something was going on, and obviously it went from radio to television. Um, there was no internet at the time, so there wasn't any way to get it over the computers or anything. We didn't have that option. Do you remember what was told to the public at this time of an announcement? Uh, the original announcement, from what I remember, was there's nothing to worry about. Um, there was an accident, but right now everything seems to be okay. What were your initial thoughts, feelings, and reactions when hearing this tragic event? Uh, really, I didn't know enough how to react. Um, it was a nuclear power plant, but we weren't, unless you were a nuclear physicist, you didn't know what was going on. We just had to accept what we were told at the time, and we were told through radio and television and newspaper. Did you call anyone or try to reach anyone? I think uh, I called my husband who was at work and uh, he had just heard it all so um, and that was the only person that I had talked to. What did you do in the moments, hours, and days after this happened? Uh, after this happened there were all kinds of reports uh, coming off of the news. Um, there were uh, different reports. They were conflicting reports uh, coming from uh, Met Ed, who owned and operated the uh, three mount, the nuclear reactor, uh, the Patriot News reporters, the Civil Defense, the NRC. Uh, there were all kinds of reports. Uh, everybody was just more or less watching TV, listening to the news. And um, also, there was a discrepancy on evacuation radius. They were starting to evacuate people. At first they said within a five mile radius of the plant. 
then 10, and then 20 miles. And uh, we were about 22 miles away. So over the next day, I decided to take my boys and go to Shippensburg and stay with my family. And I stayed with them for five days. And again, uh, we were constantly uh, listening to the news. And, um, and then um, they uh, said that a hydrogen bubble had developed in the reactors. And everybody was afraid that that would blow up and explode and release even more radiation. That never happened. They did call in some experts from the uh, NRC. And uh, one of those, which I remember very clearly, his name was Harold Denton. He was a director of the NRC, and he was on the news, and he had a very calming effect over everybody. And with his uh, leadership and direction, uh, I think everybody calmed down um, and uh, felt a little bit better. Were there any procedures for the public? Um, it was advised that everybody stay indoors and close their windows. And um, also they did start some evacuation procedures. Um, and again, there was um, a discrepancy on that. They came out with five miles radius of the plant, 10 and then 20. Um, and the schools did close down and I forget exactly how long they were closed. It may have been, I'm not sure, it may have been a week. When you heard the news in 2017 that Exelon, whom the last reactor is owned and operated by, were officially closing Three Mile Island in 2019, what were your thoughts? My first thought was it's about time. Um, we know that nuclear power is it's efficient in some, in some respects, it doesn't pollute in some respects, uh, but because of the possibilities of meltdown, because of all the, the toxic waste left behind, there's no way to maintain nuclear power anymore. It's too expensive. Um, I did I did some research and it took when it, after the unit two melted down, it took 12 years and almost a billion dollars to decontaminate it. We spent money building it, and then we spent money running it. We pay for our electricity, and then it costs millions and millions to the consumer and to taxpayers to get rid of it. There is a silver lining that came from this crisis. Changes were made in the way nuclear power plants were regulated, design changes were mandatory, and safety and emergency programs were put in place. The accident resulted in higher costs and longer construction times for power plants. Emergency procedures were also put in place for schools. School students are bused 45 plus miles away and schools are given evacuation plans that they should go over with their students yearly in preparation for a nuclear power plant emergency.